Hey everybody, Catherine here. Today I want to address three of my most frequently asked questions. If you're new to my channel, last May I quit my job and hit the road full time and have been living in my Lance Light truck camper. I split my time between camping in my camper and also camping in the backcountry as I am very passionate about backpacking. My videos mainly consist of my hiking and backpacking trips and then also living life on the road. I think one thing that van life and full-time RV people and backpacking and hiking individuals have in common is that we have a great love of the outdoors and I think that that's why we are all out here so I hope that I have a little bit of something for everybody here on this channel if you'd like to see my journey getting started on the road I have created a playlist of my truck camper life videos and will be continuing to add to that you can go back to the beginning and see how this all got started all right let's jump into the three most frequently asked questions. I'll save the most frequently asked question for last and they all relate to safety. So I'll start with number three. Question number three is why don't you get a dog? The answer to that is because so many of the trails that I like to hike and backpack do not allow dogs, unfortunately. I would always be having to struggle with the issue of how to either kennel my dog, who could watch my dog, and unfortunately I think it actually would tend to hold me back with my lifestyle. I love dogs. I would love to have a dog, although, however, I don't know how we would uh, share this space as it is very, very small. But yeah, I mean, just currently with the way that my lifestyle is and the fact that I like to get deep into the backcountry, I like to backpack and hike a lot of national parks, and I know most national parks don't allow dogs on the trails, it just would hinder my lifestyle, unfortunately. I think that most people ask that because they think that I might be lonely out here and it would be a great source of company, and it would, but I'm not lonely so far <laughs> and I've actually been able to link up with a lot of friends and some family since I've been on the road uh, these three months so I haven't really spent a huge amount of time alone and when I am alone I'm very busy um, I have a lot of you know videos to edit videos to shoot I still do work for my former employer remotely and you know it's just not I don't have a whole huge amount of time of downtime so there you have it that's why I do not have a dog question number two is am I concerned about leaving my rig for days at a time now now because of my lifestyle as a backpacker, I tend to be in the backcountry for you know days at a time, several days at a time, and I do have to leave my rig at a trailhead unattended. So a big question has been concern about my rig and its contents and whether you know I'm worried about it being broken into. Here's kind of the way that I look at that. I think of it like is if you have a sticks and bricks home and you go on vacation for two weeks or you go on vacation for a week, or you leave it for any extended period of time, you're at work for the day, you could have potentially people watching your movements and knowing when you're coming and going, and your house can get broken into when you're away from it. Are you never supposed to leave your home? Are you supposed to be in it at all times? And for that matter, it can get broken into when you're in it. That happens, home invasion robberies. So that's kind of the way that I tend to look at it. If it's going to get broken into, it's going to get broken into. I am fully insured and I also have a policy that covers all of my gear and electronics and everything that's inside of it, the contents that are inside of it. So if anything were to happen, I could replace it. It's just not realistic that I can be with my rig at all times. And for that matter, you know, it could be broken into sitting on a city street as I'm having lunch in a restaurant. Uh, while I'm in a grocery store, you know, there's just no real protection against that happening, no matter where you are. A lot of the trailheads that I start these hikes on are miles and miles away from any town. So to me, it would be a lot of effort needed to be put forth for somebody to actually target a trailhead to break into a car. I mean, it is possible. It can happen. It might happen. But if it does, I'll just deal with it. And, you know, to me, it's more important for me to live my life and get outside and, you know, do the things that I enjoy. And the number one most frequently asked question is... <laughs> Am I scared out here? And that goes for either camping in the RV or camping in the backcountry. I am alone, so I know that a lot of people wonder, am I scared? The answer to that is no, I'm not. 
Uh, so far, I have not been scared out here. You know, I think that in the places that I'm camping and in the backcountry, I'm in very remote places. I'm in the woods, and, you know, I think that the odds are much lower of something happening to me out here than it would be in the city. I think in cities, you're in very populated areas. You have people and individuals who may not be very savory characters that are out looking for victims. If you're out in the woods, I think it's going to take a lot more effort for somebody to find what they're looking for if they have ill intent upon another person. And I'm mostly talking right now of the two-legged creatures. I take precautions for my safety. I carry things with me for my protection. And I'm very cognizant of my surroundings and I do everything that I possibly can to protect myself. I can't live in fear. I can't let fear rule my life and I'll be honest with you, I let that happen for a good part of my life. I allowed fear to stop me down from doing lots of things that I could and wanted to do. It's been a lot of work to overcome that and I'm at a point now where I don't let fear rule me and I don't let fear stop me. I don't allow fear to control me. The way that I look at it is if it's my time, it's my time. If it's my time to go, then so be it. That's how it was meant to be. As far as animals go in the backcountry, I also take precautions out there with storing my food properly and I carry protection. I carry a you know, SOS device. I carry an in-reach mini and also things on my person to protect myself. And I do everything that I can just to make sure that I'm safe as possible. If I have one message to convey in this video, I would say do not let fear stop you down from going after your dreams. I read a lot of comments on my videos where people say, you know, I wouldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I'm too scared to do that. Or I also see people that have inspired to overcome their fears and to try it and get out there and not let fear shut them down. We only have this one life to live and we should live it, you know? Don't leave this earth with any regrets and that's my philosophy and that's why I'm out here right now. I do not want to leave this earth and have regretted that I didn't try this. So far, so good, guys. Thank you so much for your support, for your questions, for your comments. If you have any other questions for me, please go ahead and leave them in the comments and we'll uh, see if we can get those answered for you in due time. I know that I picked up a lot of RV Van Life type subscribers and just know that I will try to also show you more about how life is on the road. I'm trying to incorporate a little bit of that into my you know, road trip style videos as well and just things that I cook and eat and that sort of thing. I'm trying to incorporate a little bit more of that on the channel so stick with me and I hope I have a little bit of something for everybody here and thank you so much for your support. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and also to hit the bell notification if you want to be notified of all of my future videos. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.